Imagine this scenario. You have been driving for a long day, for long distances. You're tired and you want to rest. But your EV's battery is almost empty. So what do you do about charging? Well, you can go to a DC fast charger, but the problem is you have to plug in, wait there, and then unplug it before you get to rest. You can also try to find a random outlet somewhere and plug in and charge via level one. But that is super slow and you won't wake up in the morning with a full battery. Only if there's a way for you to plug in, go to sleep, and then wake up with a full battery. Well, today we are talking about level two charging. Welcome to Ready Steady Charge, and thank you to Lightron for sponsoring this video. Let's go through some of the basic information about level 2 charging. I'm sure many of you EV veterans are very experienced with it, but let's go through the basics first. Basically, all EVs, even PH EVs, should be capable of level 2 charging. For non-Tesla EVs, level 2 chargers use the J1772 Type 1 charging plug in North America, which is the exact same one used for level 1 charging. If you have a Tesla with the NACS port, your vehicle should come with a J1772 to NACS adapter to allow you to use J1772 chargers. Adapters exist for the reverse situation. You can charge a non-Tesla EV with a charger that comes with a NACS plug by using a NACS to J1772 adapter. Where can you find level two chargers? Well, kind of everywhere. They can be installed at home or be installed in the public. As long as you have an appropriate outlet, such as in machine shops or in campgrounds, you can bring your own mobile level 2 charger and charge on level 2. Just remember, you will need a 240 volt outlet. This is the major difference between level 1 and level 2 charging. Level 1 charging can be done from any 120 volt household outlet, which is easy to find. Level 2 chargers require more specialized type of 240 volt outlets. The types of outlets, which typically run ovens and dryers. Next, let's get a little bit more technical and delve into the technical specifications of level two charging. Generally speaking, North American households come with two types of outlets, the 120 volt outlet and the 240 volt outlets. 120 volt outlets are your household outlets, which power the majority of your devices and appliances. In most households, there are two types of 120 volt outlets that are common. The NEMA 5-15 outlet, which has a maximum current of 15 amps, and the NEMA 5-20, which has a maximum current of 20 amps. Charging your EV on 120 volts is considered level one charging. And we had done a video about this topic in depth. Charging an EV on 120 volts and 15 amps limits you to 1.8 kilowatts. Charging on 120 volts and 20 amps limits you to 2.4 kilowatts. Let's compare this to charging on 240 volts, which is level two charging. There are also a variety of 240 volt outlets that you can find around the house. Some of these include the NEMA 14-20 with a 20 amp limit, 14-30 with a 30 amp limit, which is commonly used for dryers, 14-50 with 50 amp limit, and 14-60 with 60 amp limit. These are commonly used for electric ovens. There are many other types of 240 volt outlets which are not commonly found in the home. And that is because they are used for more specialized equipment like welders or plasma cutters. The following is a table with the different current limits and the corresponding charging speeds. As you can see, if you use a 240 volt outlet, you can charge at a theoretical maximum much faster than level one. If you wish to install your own level two charger at home, 
it is likely that you will have to install it close to where you park your car. There are two choices. Uh, the first one is to hardwire your charger. This forgoes the need to install an outlet, but it does lock your charger down, rendering it immobile. The alternative is to install your own outlet, which your charger can plug into. This way, the charger can be removed easily and be used elsewhere. This is the Electron Portable Charger, and it's a level 2 charger. It comes with uh, 16 feet worth of cable, and it is quite small compared to a lot of other level 2 chargers you can find on the market. This portable level 2 charger will charge at 240 volts and maxes out at 40 amps. That gives you 9.6 kilowatts of maximum charging speed. Compared to 1.8 kilowatt maximum charging speed on level 1, this is a game changer. What we have here is a standard range 2023 Model 3. And this vehicle has a 57.5 kilowatt hour battery. With this Electron charger, it will take around 6 hours to charge from 0% to 100%. This charger uses a NEMA 14-50 outlet. Now this outlet maxes out at 50 amps. However, the charger maxes out at 40 amps. This is quite a smart decision on Electron's part, and we'll talk about this later in the video. If you are interested in this particular charger, we have a link in the description below where you can click and buy one of these Electron Level 2 chargers. Now, where else can you find Level 2 chargers? Outside of the home, public Level 2 chargers can be found in many places. They could be free or paid. Campgrounds are another place where you can find 240 volt outlets meant for public use. Again, know the maximum current the outlet can supply and don't exceed it. This leads me to tell you about a special category of chargers which I will call dual voltage AC chargers. These are mobile chargers that have swappable plugs which allows both the use of 120 volt and 240 volt outlets. If you are in a situation where being able to charge on both types of outlets is important to you, this is a good 2-in-1 product. We have talked a lot about the Level 2 chargers, but we should talk about charging your EV. Now let's talk about some of the practical considerations of Level 2 charging. Before you run out and buy the fastest Level 2 charger on the market, Consider how fast your EV can charge on AC. The vehicle with the slowest AC charging are going to be PHEVs. For example, the Outlander PHEV has a maximum charging current of 15 amps at 240 volts, which is 3.6 kilowatts. Older battery electric vehicles like my Kona Electric tend to have an AC charging limit of 7 kilowatts, which is around 30 amps. The latest battery electric vehicles tend to have an AC charging limit of 11 kilowatts, which is around 50 amps. The older Model S and Model Xs have the ability to charge at 22 kilowatts on AC. There are Gen 2 Tesla destination chargers that are capable of supplying this much power, but it might be difficult to install something like this in the house as it will require a 100 amp connection. For a typical North American home, a 48 amp charger is probably the fastest level 2 charger that can be installed in a practical and reasonable manner. How does level 2 charging speed translate into day-to-day -day use? Well, let's use the Ford F-150 Lightning 2024 extended range as an example. This vehicle has a 131 kilowatt hour battery and an EPA estimated consumption of 48 kilowatt hour per 100 miles. That converts to 29.8 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers. Let's say your commute was 100 kilometers per day. That is going to use 29.8 kilowatt hours of energy. If you are using a level 1 charger with a maximum charging speed of 1.8 kilowatts, that is going to take 16.5 hours to recover the energy you have used during the day. And that is not to account for any charging losses. This means that it is unlikely for the Lightning to recover the amount of energy used during the day by charging overnight. 
if you have an 11 kilowatt level two charger, recovering the 29.8 kilowatt hours takes around two hours and 45 minutes. In fact, the entire 131 kilowatt hour battery pack can theoretically be charged from empty to full in 12 hours or so. If you drive a small and efficient EV over modest distances, or if you drive a very large inefficient EV over short distances, level one charging will probably suffice. However, if you want the ability to charge almost any EV from empty battery to 100% overnight, you cannot ignore the utility of level two charging. Level two chargers are also useful in cold climates like what we have here in Canada. Many EVs nowadays are capable of battery preconditioning, and almost all EVs can preheat the cabin. Both activities take power that is usually higher than what a level one charger can provide. If you want to preheat either your battery, your cabin, or both without eating into the battery's energy, you will want to keep your EV plugged into a level two charger. In extreme cold temperatures, and I'm talking about minus 30 degrees Celsius temperature, some EVs will take a little bit of energy from the battery to maintain the battery's temperature above a certain point. Just as preconditioning, this can draw more power than what a level one charger can provide. If you have a level two charger plugged in, you can make sure that the energy needed to maintain the battery temperature come from the charger and the battery will not drain over time. Now that we have discussed the advantages of level two charging, let's talk about the disadvantages and the precautions surrounding level two charging. Whether you are hardwiring a charger or installing a 240 volt outlet, hire a professional to do the work properly. Unless you are an electrician, I recommend paying for someone qualified to do the work. I don't need to remind you of the risk of messing around with electricity, but if you choose to DIY, many jurisdictions will require an inspection. So just pay for someone to do it right the first time. And here lies the disadvantage of level two charging compared to level one, and that is cost. The work that's required to install a 240 volt outlet could range from hundreds of dollars, if not to thousands of dollars. When you buy an EV, it usually comes with a level one charger and all you need is to plug it into a household outlet. A level one charger is much more convenient on trips since it is much more likely that you will find an accessible 120 volt outlet you are unlikely to find an accessible 240 volt outlet at a hotel or Airbnb unless it was installed specifically for EV charging. Pulling 100% of the rated current from any outlet is not recommended. If your outlet is rated for 50 amps, this rating means it is recommended to pull 50 amps for a short period of time. If you pull 50 amps continuously, there is a risk of your outlet overheating, which can lead to burning or melting. The recommendation for continuous long-term power draw is 80% of the rated current. For a 50 amp outlet, you should draw at most 40 amps continuously, which is 9.6 kilowatts. Some chargers have the ability to reduce current supplied, and most EVs have the ability to reduce charging current. To avoid the limitation of an outlet altogether, you can choose to hardwire your charger. There are outlets that are designed for longer duration power draw, but some are not. Consider one that is designed for continuous power draw or designed for EV charging to be installed in your garage. There are products that act like switches, which allow you to plug in your level two charger and another appliance like a dryer. Power can only be supplied to one side at a time. I still think it is best practice if possible, both practically and financially, to have a dedicated 240 volt outlet for your charger that has its own circuit breaker so that it does not have to share with another appliance. If you must install your outlet and charger outdoors, extra precautions should be taken to not expose the outlet to the elements. 
Many chargers have outdoor rating, but it isn't a bad idea to have some type of structure to reduce or prevent exposure to the elements, especially to rain and snow. You may run into a situation where you have a 240 volt outlet that does not match the plug on your charger. When this situation arises, it's definitely possible to adapt one type of 240 volt outlet to another type. I personally do not recommend this, but if you must, you need to make sure that the adapter has a power rating that is either equal to or above your charger's rating. Avoid janky solutions like this Y adapter. This Y adapter adapts two 120 volt outlets into one 240 volt outlet. To start off, it is likely difficult to find two 120 volt outlets close to each other that also run on separate single phase circuits. And even if you do, the maximum power draw through the setup is 3.6 kilowatts, which isn't that fast for level two charging. If you happen to plug into two 120 volt outlets on the same circuit, as soon as you try to pull 3.6 kilowatts, the circuit breaker will trip. Thank you so much for watching our video on level two charging. I certainly hope that you found this video informative and useful. Subscribe to our channel for more EV-related content, and my name is Solomon, we'll see you on the next one.